In this video, I cut open and customize an NFL football to transform it into a wearable fashion accessory. For context, I played football for the University of Oklahoma and signed with the Miami Dolphins right after college. However, I got cut earlier this year and now I have a lot of footballs at home. So why not put one to good use? That's a good idea. And you might be thinking, well, this is just a chill, casual video, but no, I got a lot on the line here, okay? Here are the four main goals that I want to achieve for this video. Will this thing come out cool or drippy, as the kids say? Considering I never do arts and crafts and have literally never sewn in my life, this was going to be difficult. Goal number two, will this thing actually be functional? Like, can I take it to the store and use it to buy something and wear it around without it breaking? Goal number three, will my wife like it and finally think that I'm fashionable? Oh, and for context, I'm doing this for her because when we met in college, she used to always roast my fashion and say my style was bad. Finally, I wanted to ship this as a gift before Christmas to a little guy named July. July is tough as nails as he's battling cancer, and he's also a big football fan, so I want to make this good, and I really hope he likes it. Well, what is this? Time to get to work. To accomplish all this, where else would we go but my own store? <laughs> my name is Michael. Yep, yeah, that, that's the joke. Now, truth be told, I've been in a Michaels four times in my life, and three of those times were for this video. Okay, we're looking for leather. Seeing all these cool supplies but not really knowing much about them was kind of overwhelming. But thankfully, I did plan ahead. See, I watched a YouTube video of a guy named Tanner explaining how to sew leather and he also gave a lot of good tips and tricks that I wrote down on my notes app. So, yeah, that's pretty much all the preparing I did, but I think it was enough. So thanks, Tanner. Please comment thanks, Tanner. And Tanner, if you see this, thank you, good sir, you helped me. Now that my phone was set up, I was going to town on this leather section. I already got a few things off the list I made from Tanner's video, so that was a good sign. Now they had some sweet leather strips of different colors and designs that I had the idea to put on the inside of the football for a nice interior. And thankfully they still had some leather straps left that I could use to make sure I could wear the football on my body. And while looking, I thought of a great idea. Did you guys see the light bulb over my head? I thought I would do that while I'm editing. I'll check this out. Some leather shoes to craft and practice before we start messing up an NFL football. That seemed like a good idea, but turns out those were pretty difficult to make as you'll see later in the video. Hey, what's up, Michael? Do you guys have zippers? You know what I mean? Like zippers that you can sew onto something? Right back there. Okay, perfect. Oh, your name tab, your name's Ron. His name's Ron. Yeah, this is Michael, so his name's Ron. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm changing my name. My, my name's Michael. Ah. Even after the name confusion, Ron was actually so nice, he even walked me to the other part of the store to help find the zippers. Wait, hold on, what's this? Zippers. Michael, we win. These are, thank you, sir. We're probably just gonna go with all of them. After getting sewing needles and different threads, I just made my rounds around the store to see if anything caught my eye and I bought it if I thought in any way I could use it with the football to make it better. Okay, we should probably check out before I spend over $500 here. Oh yeah, there's also one more mystery item that I ordered online to help customize the football. And as a hint, it costs more than this whole trip to Michael's. So stay tuned for epicness. With the easy part done, I was excited to be home and get into the difficult part of this challenge. And for my setup, I'm using my kitchen table that I brought into the living room, and I'm using Christmas wrapping paper to cover the table, which surprisingly works very well because there's actually grid lines on the inside of it, which I didn't know prior to this. With that set up, now we just need to grab the football that we want to use. Here it is. I got some different options here in the football bag, as y'all will see. This is a classic NFL ball, but there's no team branding on it. While this one is also a classic NFL football, but it is team branded officially from the Miami Dolphins. So I'm leaning towards this football, even though these are much more expensive and hard to find. I'm doing it for the content. These are all used. I'm not seeing my brand new one. Now I only had one more brand new team issued NFL football and I think it would just look a lot better because it's red and it would stick out more and look great for what I was trying to make. But I was starting to get frustrated because I could not find this thing. Guys, I don't know where I put my brand new footballs. I do have two boxes of sports drinks left over from my previous video, but I don't know where this brand new football is. While we're here, I do see this thing. Let's see if I can make it. I'm only gonna get one try here, no editing. While I was cooling off my anger with the sports drink, I was standing below my attic door and I had a thought that maybe my wife stored my brand new football up there. So I decided to investigate. Uh, did she put it up here? All right, gang, gang. You guys are coming with me. What was that? 
but in tarnation. I might not be able to make this video. I might be finished before it's even... Hold up. What was that? What is that? Uh... As you can see, it's more reddish in its appearance. That's because the leather hasn't been scrubbed at all or worked on or anything. You know, with the game balls, sometimes they put mud on the football and other stuff. And I think it'll really pop at the end for my fashion. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and why did I put it in the attic? Okay, I'm sorry for the shenanigans. I just wanted to make this dramatic because this is my last brand new team issued NFL football. So I wanted to make a point that it's a big deal that I'm using it. And before I cut this thing open to permanently change it, there's just one last thing I need to do and that's give the leather shoes a go as a quick warm up. Now really I bought these because I never worked with leather before or sewn anything. So I was hoping it was gonna give me confidence, but quite frankly, it did the exact opposite. I mean, you would think something with instructions wouldn't be that hard to figure out, right? Wrong, I was working on these bad boys for what felt like five hours, and with all that work, here's what I got to show for it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Alas, we're finally on to actually customizing the football. And although those leather shoes hurt my confidence, I was still down to give this my all because I remembered what was at stake. Making July a cool gift for Christmas, and of course the rest of my goals previously mentioned. Now the process of making this football actually took me three days, so I will show time lapses to you guys, but the parts that are most interesting or difficult, I will show you in normal speed and share my thoughts on how it's going. Let's get it. There's a rubber bladder on the inside of this, and I don't know if this will be deep enough on the first cut to pierce the bladder, but there's only one way to find out. Oh, I already hit the bladder. Oh, wow. Right, this thing is sharp then. Whoa, no way. Check that out, hang gang. There's the bladder, it's a clear bladder, but initially my X-Acto knife went a bit deep. Now I needed to extract the bladder to be able to decorate the interior. And the bladder's connected to the football where you put the pump in. The nipple's gone. I'll replace that with something. That's what it's called, by the way, guys. Don't be immature. The bladder has been extracted. Like hopefully mine never will. <laughs> You know, mine might be a little smaller than this bladder, actually. This flap that goes right below the laces is what helps the football go in a spiral motion. Now, the flap was actually as big as this mini football, and I didn't exactly put it on correctly, but I still wanted to see if it made a difference. Woo! <clears throat> oh my! That's a dot! Dude, that actually was much better than I thought it would be. <laughs> I almost just fell over. Sorry, just wanted to test that real quick. Back to working on the football. You guys are literally on the inside of the football. For the interior design of this football bag, I wanted to use the leathers that I bought and I decided to actually use all three because I thought it would look cooler. Right here, I'm trying to cut the fabric to follow the shape of the inside of the football, which is like a half oval. Now that I had it in the right shape, I had to lather it in super glue to allow it to stick to the inside of the football. So this part was tougher than I thought because going inside the football was not easy with only one slit open, my hands could barely fit in there, but with enough perseverance, we got it just right. Just watched a YouTube video, how to get super glue off your fingers. As you can hear, it's still on there. Yeah, I was actually a little worried that I had a dangerous amount of super glue stuck on my fingers, but thankfully I was okay, and I finished putting on the other two pieces of fabric. And I wanted to make sure my fabric was secure, so I even sewed it in with a knot on the side. I did this by actually making a hole in the side panels and then looping my yarn through there and tying a knot to make sure it's secure. I connected my first ever needle to thread. I was feeling pretty confident, but let me tell you, this was child's play compared to connecting the zipper to the football. Snip that. And just to make it look more aesthetically pleasing, I super glued a triangle of the leftover fabric on top of it as a nice look. At this point, the inner lining was feeling very sturdy, but I wanted to cover this middle gap with the more fancy design of the third fabric. Oh, that is money. So far we're having a solid start, but one setback that occurred was my fingers being absolutely annihilated by the super glue. This was an ongoing problem that I had to overcome. So we moved on and it was time to open up the mallet. 
Now I was excited to use this mallet, but I knew that it wasn't as easy as it looked, so I was pretty nervous about actually using it on the football. I even took precaution of testing it out first on this extra piece of leather, but little did I know, that's what actually backfired on me. Supposedly, I tapped this guy. <laughs> Bruh, do I have to do it harder even? Don't tell me I made a hole in this. Yeah, that didn't turn out so great, and I was in trouble for this. <laughs> I may or may not have made a hole in my table, but we got three holes in the leather. Now the hard part about using this mallet for the football to make the holes was that not only was it not flat, but I had to reach my hand inside the football to actually do it, and it just really wasn't that functional. Oh! I quickly did the other side to match it up before realizing a much easier way to do this. Bro, I just realized I have this device too. It's a straight up leather puncher. I feel like this leather puncher is going to be easier. Yeah, it wasn't just easier, it was 100 times easier as I was able to cut out the holes one by one with one squeeze at a time. I got all the circles. It kind of looks like a shell, like a clam. Now I need sewing yarn. I need prints. It was a new day, and I was ready to attack this project with more passion than ever before. With the foundation set on the first day, it was time to get crazy with our crafting skills and see if this bag can actually start looking drip. What's awesome is the glue has settled very well, and so has the inner fabric. Now some parts were difficult so far, but this part was undoubtedly the hardest part of the entire challenge. It was time to sew the zipper to the football and make sure it was functional. After measuring the exact length of the football, I cut the zipper at that point and then sealed off the edge to make sure the zipper would stop. And for this, I cut off two triangles with the extra pieces of leather that I had, which looked stylish in my opinion. So let's see if this works. Sure enough, it served as a stopper. The cool part is too, I tested it out. This needle goes right through this zipper fabric so I don't have to go and make the individual holes with this medieval device here. Now I bought multiple colors for the yarn but I decided to go with the dark blue as I thought it just stood out the best. I can't show the whole process because I'm trying to go quickly through this video to get you guys to the end results in fashion show. But let me tell you, my respect for all the sewers out there went up because for me, this was very tricky. I literally spent hours trying to get this right but I'm just glad I persevered through this part because I think the product it came out amazing at the end. Ah, it's so annoying. Here we go. Come on, I need to get this through. Stay down. Pliers do help for my type of sewing. Oh, wow. That's incredible. We stitched one side. Let's go. Now hastily after this significant victory came a humbling reminder that I was still a rookie in this sewing world. I made the mistake of punching my holes too far away on the other side of the leather. This is our first pretty big problem. To try and solve this problem, I was going to have to cut a strip off the football to make new holes that are close enough to actually sew on the other side of the zipper. The strip keep shaving away a little bit. I kept shaving away with the X-Acto knife, but what I realized I needed was a sander. And guess what I did not get from Michaels? You guessed it, a sander. <sighs> with the other side sewn, I did some final sanding on the inside flaps of leather just beneath the zipper. I had to do this meticulously to ensure that the zipper had enough room to open and close smoothly. It was time to see if this zipper actually worked. What's it getting stuck in? Oh, oh, oh! Yes! This was a major step in the development of the bag, and to test its functionality, I will use it at the store later in the video. I'm gonna go fast with the remaining customization so we can get to the epic one at the end, and of course, test all of our goals. Right here, I'm scrubbing the glue spots away. <laughs> I was already gonna go fast, but now things completely changed because I got a text from my wife saying that she was going to be home later that day. Yeah, that was a reenactment. I already got the text that she's coming home today, but I wanted to make that dramatic, you know? That might have been dramatic, but it was true. I have to finish today because she's coming home later. New tools alert. I got hooks, rings, and leather straps to make this bag wearable, similar to a satchel. This took some big brain thinking, but once I realized I can make slits in the leather straps to put the rings on, that really helped because now I had a way to attach the hooks to the actual strap. Bet you didn't expect to see this. Me either.
Thankfully, I picked up these metal eyelets when I was at Michael's, which were perfect size to plug the holes that we just made with the drill. There we go. Got it. Now, I wrestled with how to do this for a while, but I thought of the idea to loop the yarn through the hole, through the hook, back into the hole, and finally tie it off with a good knot to make sure it was secure. Voila. With the hook successfully in place, it was time to speed run the final customization so I could attach the leather strap and test my goals. I got the golden ticket. With the golden ticket, I installed a money holder, which actually worked very well. Oh yeah, let's go. That holds it so well. A quick star sticker to replace the hole left by the inflation nipple. Now it's time to add some color to this bad boy like I'm Bob Ross, but I started out with a huge mistake. Are you kidding me, bruh? Yeah, the leather paint was so thin that it leaked through past the stencil and it just looked like a black splotch, not an H. Thankfully though, I had a big brain idea to get me out of this sticky situation. I used a silver star sticker to resemble an A in the word hang time and then I used a trusted oil-based Sharpie to hand draw the rest of the letters. And I think it actually looked cooler like this. I got the silver ticket. With this silver ticket, I cut out a rectangle shape in the middle of it to tape on a thin sheet of plastic on the back. Once attached to the football, this would serve as the compartment where I put my ID. Inside look here. As you can see, it fits perfectly on the inside of the football and we'll put in a photo to see how it holds up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Going in. Ah, a perfect fit. And now for our secret customization tool that I ordered online. Prepare to be amazed. Oh, look at that. Look at- If you're still confused, this is a branding device. I've literally never branded anything in my life, so I first wanted to test it on a used football that I had. It's an old one. Let's see how this leather looks. Oh, that's sick. It was time to try it on the real thing. Crap. Yeah, unfortunately, I had a rough start branding the real football, and I think part of the problem was that this football was flat, not nice and aired up and tight like the other one. But thankfully, with some perseverance, I still think it came out really cool. Oh, that's a good one. Once I figured out how to do it better on this football, I may have gotten slightly carried away. I did nine brandings of the Hangtime logo. The football bag is coming along great, and I'll show some up-close details of the football at the end, panel by panel, but right now I'm putting some final artistic touches on it. I feel like Van Gogh right now. Before we go out in public to test our goals. The bag was now ready to leave the house. It was time to get a suit, and on the way home, test the functionality of the bag at the store. Okay. You know, Yes, sir, actually. I was looking for a suit that you think would match this football. Like, the color scheme that I'm wearing. Like, if I'm wearing this. Keep it simple. Don't right. go out your means because when is this event, by the way? Tonight. See, you know what I'm saying? You're going out your way. So guess what? You wait till the last minute. <laughs> I may have waited till the last minute, but this gentleman was so nice, and he got me hooked up in no time. With the suit picked out, it was time to head home, but what better place to stop to test out our second goal than H-E-B. So far, walking with it on was a breeze, and the satchel fit perfectly for me to do my shopping in comfort and style. Yo, what's up, guys? Guys, I made this bag from scratch at home. What are your guys' thoughts on it? Thanks, bro. Dude, it kind of goes to your fit. The bag was indeed drippy, but here's a real test of functionality. Can I use it to check out at the cash register? Just that. 446. All right, I just gotta open up my bag. There we go. How long did it take? Money out of the money pocket. Uh, like three days. Yeah. You have a blessed day, sir. Hey, thanks, bro. I appreciate it. What about you? I got a bag. With my bag successfully proving to be functional, the last two goals to accomplish was proving my wife unfashionable and sending the gift to July. Breaking news, my wife is on the way home. She works for FCA if you didn't know. I feel bad because I didn't have time to clean up before she got home, but I'm hoping my fashion impresses her so much that she doesn't even care about the mess. And for some reason, I felt really nervous for this. Hi, honey. Hi. Let me give her a hug. Hi. 
Seriously, what's that smell? Yeah, I forgot branding the leather so much. I actually did create a weird smell in the house, like burnt beef jerky. <laughs> Seeing all this stuff around the house, she was certainly confused, but I told her to wait over here while I got ready to show her something special. Now I asked you guys if I should shave my beard on a community post, and it was a close one, but yes, won it slightly, so I had to listen up. Although my wife still wasn't impressed with my fashion, I was happy to be able to get this gift out to July before Christmas. I also included some other knickknacks that I hope he likes. And July, if you're watching this, keep the faith and know that the Lord works out all things for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. And same goes to you watching at home. If you want to learn more about July's story, please click the link in the description. And if you're staying on YouTube, please check out another one of my videos. Until next time, grace, love, peace, and mercy.